Woke up the third day and dad said, I saw where we wanted to go. I saw the Malaysian islands. I saw people on the beach uh, swimming in the water. I saw fishermen. I just saw a new life. Right. And it ended up being a mirage. So, um, mom then tells her side of it. Dad says, I got the boat, I'm waiting on the reef, and I'm just looking up into the mountains and going, are they, are they coming? Are they gonna come? Are they gonna come? Are the guards gonna see me? Is someone gonna see me? And he, then he sees it's just these people running down. And she said that she was carrying a, the backpack of our mm -hmm. belongings. She gave me to someone else. She said, uh, a, a strong yeah, young man sure. that to carry to carry Lewin, and um, and then because there were so many people in the boat, you couldn't bring it up to the shore because you couldn't push it out. Push it so out. you had to be in there and you had to swim out, and you're just trying to run right. to get out of there because you have to hop on the boat and get, and out, get out of eyesight before they get back before up they get the back tower. up and look and go, what is that? Right before they put up the binoculars and say, what is that? So you got a tight window, you want to run, but you don't want to make big splashing noise. And in the middle of it, these arms, I mean, you know how like just yeah. you running in waist high it's, waters, making splashing right, everywhere. For sure. Imagine 67 other 67 people doing people. that, right? And in the middle of it, the kid drops me. And so now it's like, hold on. Where's the baby? Yeah, where's the baby? And there's lots of babies, right? But it's like, where's the baby? Wow. Yeah, they pull me out of it. We all get in there, um, start climbing, bringing people into the boat. And then uh, we start going, boom, that outboard motor hits a reef and it bends the rudder. Uh, and then dad just says, I remember having to hop out of the boat and me and a few men trying to bend this rod straight. So we're not going in circles. circles we didn't yeah. have any tools. Yeah, no. Right? You get it going and um, you start motoring off, but you can't turn the engine on fast because, you know, so you're just starting to motor off real slow and just did not know if they were gonna come up and see us or not. So we spent, ended up, uh, then dad goes into the story of how um, every day at sea was a new challenge. How many days were y'all at sea? Four. Four days. Mm -hmm. So 67 people, <clears throat> 24 foot boat. Yeah. Four days at sea. Yeah. Wow. And our goal was the Malaysian Islands. Okay. That was our goal. Um, he says how there was one area of, of the very first thing that he had to navigate through, and he was just using the stars and what he had learned in the Army to navigate. And um, there was this, <laughs> he says like there was this one island they were trying to avoid. They didn't have the gas or the time to go around the island this way, and they had to go this way for some reason, but you couldn't get too close to the island. Uh, and I was like, what's up with the pri island? He said, oh, it's a prison. So, the, oh, wow. <laughs> so there's guards there yeah, looking the whole sure. time. So you're getting to get too close, but uh, you navigate around that. And the second day, there was a boat off in the distance, and they did not know whether to signal it or not. Yeah. And so you'd ask earlier, was the U.S. where you wanted to land? Absolutely. For sure. So the other, <clears throat> I have relatives who escaped, and they were picked up by other countries who were part of the NATO agreement that said, if you pick them up, you take them in as, as uh, refugees and let them become citizens of, of country. your country. Yeah. Okay. So I have uncle and cousins who were picked up by German boats. They now live in Germany. I have uncle and relatives, British boats. They're, they're yeah. in England. Yeah, that's right. They're in England. Um, Spanish boats, right? Yeah. So of all the good guys, you know, right? anyone will do, but man, the U.S. would be number one. Right. Now you had other boats out there that were the bad guys, like the guys who would say, ah, I'm gonna bring you right back. Take you back. So it could have been North Koreans, it could have been Chinese boats, Russian boats, um, North Vietnamese boats. Could have been fishermen who would just say, you know what, I'm gonna turn you in. Yeah. Because I don't agree what you were, you were doing. Could have been people who just saw you and ignore you because they didn't want to get in trouble for right. helping you. It could be someone who, who did want to help you. But what they were most afraid of were the pirates. People who knew that you were escaping and knew that you were only bringing your valuables. Mm. And they wanted your valuables and your women. And so women like my mom would pack poison onto the trip with them. And if that happens, if it goes down that way, they were prepared to take their own life. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, right? And so this boat, the second day, they did not, dad said he didn't signal it. He, he said it followed him. It never got closer, it never got farther, but he never knew what it was. Um, 
Third day, water supply had just sprung a leak. Mm. Um, rations were down to a capful. So a capful. Capful per person. You get a capful. I was super sick. Mom had a bottle like this hidden in her in her bag, and she would um, get the people around her to hold up a towel. And her excuse was, "I'm going to change clothes," mm -hmm. <clears throat> but underneath it, she was feeding me. Feeding you. Yeah. Um, she was afraid that if she showed this bottle of water, everyone would take it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we we're, we're, we we were um, down on gasoline because we were so many people, and then our water supply was low. Woke up the third day, and Dad said, "I saw where we wanted to go. I saw the Malaysian Islands. I saw people on the beach uh, swimming in the water. I saw fishermen. I just saw a new life. Right. And it ended up being a mirage. And he was no. a little so crazy." was everyone in the boat saw it. Everyone was hallucinating. They were so dehydrated. One person saw it, and the rest like, yeah, I see it. I see it, I see it, I see it. And yeah. you hear stories of people in the desert about them seeing yeah, water. For sure. It was the exact, exact opposite. Same thing. And so dad tells of that how that moment, and when they realized it wasn't a real thing, and they kept on going that way, and it never would come up, and it would come sometimes disappear, it was such a morale killer. Right. That on the fourth day, when there was another boat off in the distance, there was a big debate. Mm. What are we gonna do? We're out of this, we're out of this, what are we gonna do? Yeah. And he felt, you know, it was his show, it was his, right. um, his doing, and he felt that he was responsible for all these lives. And he, um, he said, you know, it was one of those decisions where I, I had to just decide. Yeah. And he knew his fate if it was the wrong decision. Yeah. <clears throat> he said, you know, your mom and you probably would have been fine, mm -hmm. but I knew what they were going to do with me. So they, uh, he just took out the flare and shot it. Oh, wow. Okay, so he did have something to... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Took out the flare gun, shot it, and he just waited. And just waited. Yeah. <laughs> and he says the strangest thing. One boat in the distance became two. Just like that. He was like... What's going yeah. on? Man, it ended up being, the second boat ended up being a small tugboat that was pulling us in. And when we, they tied us up, they pulled us in, and they realized who it was. Right. And I'm like, it's the U.S. Navy. Wow. This is amazing. Yeah. And Dad said, Lou, and I'll never forget it. You spend all this time fighting for your country, you know, fighting alongside yeah. this, this country that you want to belong to. You spend five years plus in prison. Mm. You escape. You plan this escape. And you're at sea thinking you're at the, you know, you're at the end of your life and right. on your rope. <clears throat> and he said the moment that they pulled us up and we looked up, it was an LS destroyer ship, the USS Thomaston. Mm. Big cannons. Yeah. And he said all of a sudden the clouds separated, the sun shined through. The American flag was waving, and he said all 300 plus soldiers were at deck at salute. Wow. Unbelievable. Crazy. And they brought him in, <clears throat> and uh, you know, they found out he was a captain, so everywhere he went, they were saluting him captain. And of course, they fed us right away, yeah, gave us sure. clothes. And they were out there looking for people like us, refugees. And <clears throat> the captain of that boat, of the big ship. Right. He was talking to my dad and he said, yeah, um, when we pulled your boat in, your little boat in, our little mm -hmm. wooden one, it sank. Unbelievable. It sank, like before the big ship could kind of pull up anchor and, wow. and, and get going again, our little boat sank. And he said, you were about another five days from the Malaysian Islands. 